can analyze this by using another circuit. It's called inverter. Inverter with V. What inverter is doing? Inverter is inverting. So we have uh, here what we had done in the rectifier. I already showed this is AC to DC conversion or rectification. So in inverter, we are doing the opposite operation, DC to AC. So, uh, so at the output, we are getting the output like this at the inverter output. So here you can see inverter output. So instead of AC sinusoidal signal, I am getting this kind of square wave. Why? It's because it's containing harmonics. So it has a DC component, it has a fundamental component, and it has higher order harmonics, second order, third order, fourth order, and so on. So here, since we want the AC at the output, this fundamental component is the desired one. But in the previous circuit, we want only this one. We do not want other things, other components. Here, since this is a AC output, we are we want. So here, fundamental component, this AC signal is the desired output, and the rest of them are unwanted ones. These are we don't need. Anyway, because of this harmonics, the AC signal looks like this practically. I showed here as a square wave, but it's not exactly true in the practical circuit. This is for ideal. For practical circuits, instead of giving having this kind of better AC signal, uh, it, it's having distortions and it has harmonics and so on. So any non-sinusoidal non periodic waveform can be represented by in Fourier series. Again, in order to perform the mathematical analysis, we have to use Fourier series or Fourier transforms. So this is the inverter circuit and the same waveform. I want to represent this waveform in Fourier transforms. So the total output voltage V of T is equal to V naught plus Vm1 sin omega T plus Vm2 sin omega, two sin omega, uh, sorry, Vm2 sin two omega T plus Vm3 sin three omega T plus Vm4 sine 4 omega t, Vm5, sine 5 omega t, and so on. These are harmonics. The same, like uh, last time, what we had seen in this circuit, here also we calculated the same. Here also we are calculating the same in AC harmonic analysis. So now, if we calculate the output RMS voltage, then Vm1 is equal to, okay, so now we are going to do the same. We are going to calculate the RMS value. The total RMS value of the output voltage is equal to VO RMS is equal to, here each component has a constant. That is the RMS value of this component. VM1 is the RMS value of this component, fundamental component. VM2 is the RMS value of this second order harmonics. This is the, um, similarly for other components. So we have the RMS value of each component. So if you want to find the RMS value of the total output voltage, we have to use this same formula. So I call VM1 as a V01, VM2 as a uh, V02, VM3 as a V03, just for a simplification. So, VO RMS is equal to, this is this one, square root of V0, this is V0, V0 square plus V01, this is V01, uh, this is V01, V01 square plus V02 square plus V03 square plus V04 square and so on. So remember, I told you already, here V01 is the desirable component. We only want this V01. This is what represented in the waveform here. 
and all other components are not desirable. So now I just make a square in the both sides. So V O R M S V O R M S square is equal to because if you, when you put the square, then this one will be gone. The square root will be gone. So that is V zero square plus V not one square, V not two square, V not three square, and so on. So now V not one. I am only after this V not one. I only want this one at the output. So I am taking this this side. So V O R M S square minus V O one square equal to the rest of the components. So I just bring this one to this side. Rest of the equation is the same. So now we can rewrite this equation like this. So V O R M S square minus V O one square. I put the whole square root is equal to V O H. So what is V O H here now? So this entire term we are replacing with V O H. Because everything is with the square, so we are, we want only V O H. So we are just simplifying this equation. So now we have this already <coughs> total output voltage minus desired output voltage that is equal to harmonics V O H. So now we divide this equation. This is equation one, for example. We divide this equation in both sides by V O one. So V O H divided by V O one. I just bring this to the left side, and if you divide here also, then you will get like this: V O R M S divided by V zero one whole square minus one. Remember the notations we are using. V O H means it's a harmonics. V O one means that is the desired. Voltage at the output. There is R M S value, and V O R M S means that is the total R M S value of the total output voltage. So now we have two equations in our hand. So we know this is the equation. Uh, I already said maybe we can make this as equation one, and we have also equation two. That is the V O H is equal to these other things. Based on these two equations, we will derive few more equations, same like the previous case. What are the two equations we have now? So we have this V O H divided by V O one is equal to this one, like this previous slide. So now we can uh, find out total harmonic distortion. So total harmonic distortion, it's simply called THD. THD is equal to V O H divided by V O one. This one. So this is the formula for this THD. And what is the distortion factor? Simply we can call as a DF or small G is equal to V O one. Divided by V O R M S. So V O one is the desired voltage. V O R M S is the total output voltage. Here V O H is the harmonics. V O one is the desired voltage. So now I can apply this G to this equation. So now T H D. We know T H D is equal to V O H by zero one, right? So this is equal to this equation. So now I am just, uh, but here we have already de defined this small g is equal to V O one by V O R M S. Uh, so V O R M S by V O one is here. So instead of putting g directly, I am putting one by g in this equation. So one by g whole square minus one. This is the final formula for this T H D. Total harmonic distortion. So total harmonic distortion is equal to square root of one by g whole square minus one. If you separately ask what is this g, then this g is equal to v zero one divided by v o r m s. Okay. So now we have these three equation in our hand. We derived based on these equations. So now again we have two cases. 
case one, there is no harmonic or there are no harmonics in the output. Case two, yes, there are harmonics at the output. So now let us assume if there is no, if there are no harmonics at the output, <clears throat> then harmonics V of H is equal to zero. We can just close our eyes and we can simply say harmonics is zero because we assume no harmonics. And V of one is equal to V of RMS, right? Decide output voltage, that is a, a decide output voltage this is what we want, that is equal to the total output voltage. And THD is equal to zero. The total harmonic distortion is equal to zero. Why? Because harmonic is equal to zero. V over H is zero. Zero divided by V01, zero, zero divided by V01, whatever number you put, because this is zero, so this is going to be zero. So that is what here? THD is equal to zero. No harmonics distortion because there is no harmonic. And G is equal to one. Uh, what is the formula for G? That is V01 divided by V over MS. We already said V01 is equal to V over MS. So we can replace this, this V01, we can cancel. So that is equal to one. So G is equal to one. So these are the conditions. When there are no harmonics, this is these are the equations you should remember. Now, case two. In case two, what we are doing? So we have uh, so many harmonics. We have harmonics. But we want only this fundamental component as a desired output. All others are undesirable. We do not want. So here we can apply the same formula. So VOH, that is the, what is VOH? That is the harmonics, right? This is here I had given. So VOH is definitely greater than zero because there are harmonics. And VORMS is definitely greater than V01 because V01 is the desired voltage. It's coming together with other things. So it is VORMS is greater than VO1. It's not equal like here. And THD, that is the total harmonic distortion factor, is also greater than zero because the formula is VOH divided by V01. So harmonics divided by decide voltage, that is going to be some value that is definitely greater than zero. And this small g value is less than one. The small g, what is the formula for small g? That is VO1 divided by VO RMS. <clears throat> so desired voltage is only one volt and VO RMS may be five volt, the same example. So this is going to be what? 0 0.2, right? So this is 0 0.2 volt. So then this 0 0.2 is less than one. So that is what we had given here uh, with a formula. So now you know two cases. If there are no harmonics, then these are the conditions. If there are harmonics, then these are the conditions. So please try to remember these equations for THD, small g, and so on and also the conditions for no harmonics and conditions for harmonics. We may need these equations when we study about inverter circuits. So upon the completion of uh, this lecture section, I, I hope you are able to understand what is harmonics. It's happening because of switching and basics of DC harmonics. Uh, we can represent the harmonics waveform in terms of Fourier series and then we can find the RMS values of the total output voltage. And then we can derive some equations and formulas. The same uh, is happening for AC harmonics analysis also. So what we had done so far, we have found some equations. We have derived some equations for DC harmonic analysis or AC harmonic analysis. And you know what is harmonics and you know what is second order harmonics and what is third order harmonics and you know what is fundamental component so second order is twice as the fundamental 
so third order is thrice three times as the fundamental you are going to do the experiment in the lab uh, so if you encounter some harmonics then you will know these are happening due to some switching characteristics